And here we are back again at the Main Machinist channel. I've got a big mess over here, don't I? I'm gonna clean this up today. And I'm also gonna reclaim this Rockwell drill press that I've had. This, when I first started my shop a few years ago, it was just a home hobby shop at that time. And I only things I had was this Rockwell drill press, my Dake 50H press, a Greenard number three press, and an Atlas Craftsman 12 by 36 lathe. That was all I had when I started out. And, I, and before long, I was getting a little bit of work here and there, helping people out with things they needed. This is a really nice American-made Rockwell drill press. And I don't really need it anymore because I have my date, I mean, I'm sorry, I have my SIP drill press, which you've all seen before being used here in my shop, which is a just a much bigger, more robust unit. But this Rockwell costs me nothing to keep. I don't owe any money on it, of course, and it's a good setup. The only problem was I, I never really knew where to put it in this new building because I didn't really have a demand for it. So I'm gonna show you what I'm kind of coming up with. And as I clean up this area today, I won't show you the cleanup, but I will show you how I'm gonna mount this drill press and then we'll turn it on and use it a little bit. So I got thinking, where do I wanna put the drill press? I, I had it in here on a workbench and I just never used it there. And it always cluttered up the workbench and I, it was just not a good fit. So I got thinking, well, this is where I have all my smaller machines. I have my Logan 922 here. I have the uh, Rode Shaper. And I have this Burke uh, horizontal mill that I haven't really shown anybody yet. It's something that I bought, believe it or not, for $150 or something like that. It was so cheap. And uh, it needs a counter shaft assembly put on because the spindle speed's way too high. And we're going to do that. At some point, I'm going to get around to fixing this thing up. And uh, I bought it basically so that um, my kids could get a taste for milling on something smaller and, you know, less volatile than having them use my bridge port and make a mistake on that. So I thought this would be a great way to get introduce them into horizontal milling. And, uh, you know, maybe I I do a small number of key seats from time to time in here. I mean, I it's not unheard of for me to get calls from uh, the mill or from guys that work in the woods. They have a shaft that needs a key seat put in it. And this could actually be kind of a nice setup for that. And I have plenty of horizontal milling cutters. So I thought maybe in my small area, I'll put this rock well. And so I dug around in my scrap pile out back and I remembered that I had a couple of legs. They're kind of mismatched, but they'll work just fine. And uh, I had some lumber left over from when I built my shop. And, you know, pretty beefy that I think will hold that rock well press. So I'm going to drill some holes through here, mount the wood to the legs, and then we're gonna mount the drill press on and we'll, we'll start it up. I thought what would be kinda cool is, right now I share, I keep my road shaper plugged in, um, cause I have one drop here that comes from the ceiling, you can see, uh, that runs all of these machines that are little single phase machines. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add a second drop out of that box so that I can have two of these plugged in at any time. And I'll probably keep the shaper plugged in and the Rockwell drill press plugged in. And uh, I think it's gonna be neat. It'll be a, a handy thing to have for whenever I wanna use it. I'll, I'll probably use it mostly just for countersinking and stuff like that. Let's get started. So you saw that I drilled some holes on this block. We're gonna bolt this one down, then we're gonna do the same here. Uh, one of the legs is a little bit longer, and I don't know what we're gonna do with this part yet. We'll figure something out as we go. I'm gonna use an old tool maker trick to put in some counter bores here. If you take some high speed steel drills, you can grind them flat and use them as counter bores. And I got this at Harbor Freight, and I know you guys we all knock Harbor Freight, but every once in a while, they get something that's kind of cool, and you could make these yourself just as easily. But it's a little drill stop set, so I can uh, use the collar on the drill, and they have a little set screw where you can set them to the drill, 
and have a depth there. Kind of neat for this kind of an application. You might want to pick yourself up one of those. See how that works? Pretty neat. Here is where we are gonna put it on the stand. And I'm gonna to have to mount this, um, the legs to the, to the concrete, but I haven't done that yet because I'm not quite sure if this is exactly where I want it. So we're gonna to continue to bolt down the drill press to the table. And I'm gonna clean up this drill press. It's been sitting for a couple of years now and it was in an unheated area. So you can see that it did get some, some rust going on there. But this is how it looks so far. Let's continue on and then we'll show it in operation. And here we go, it is all painted, has new spindle bearings in it. Not a perfect restoration, but a good functional quick rebuild. I'm still missing some things on it, like I'm missing the, the Rockwell badge here. This is goofy, I need to fix that. You know, the switch is incorrect, should have push button switch, but it's functional now. Works well, kind of sounds like a sewing machine. It does not have the return on the quill. So you manually have to retract it. So missing that. So there's a few things that I need to do to really bring this up to being like new again. But for now, I'm just gonna put it into use and use it when the need arises. I don't use drill presses all that often with the milling machine in here, but it is handy to have. Now the next thing I'm gonna have to do, and I won't record this, but you'll see it in some of my new videos. I'm gonna finish the stand, I'm gonna repaint that. I'm probably gonna paint it black. And um, I still haven't put the concrete anchors in, so I'm gonna do that tonight. And then my next plan is, is I'm going to build, let me shut that off. I'm gonna build a bracket here that comes out and we're gonna put another board there and we're gonna mount this little belt sander onto that point. So that way this whole little area has got more uh, functionality to it. And I won't, right now that belt sander, I have to move it when I wanna use it and I don't like that. So hopefully you've enjoyed watching this. Let me know what you think about the old Rockwell press. This is Vista Green that I painted it. I'm not sure if I like Vista Green or not, but hey, it's better than it was, that's for sure. Thanks for watching and as always, like, subscribe, share these videos if you can. Appreciate every viewer. Thank you.